So we're back for some more physiology. This particular video is going to deal with one of two topics. It's going to be the start of it, and then we'll finish it in the next little chitty chat chat, but it deals with diffusion. So we're going to look at how do we know where molecules move. This is kind of important because it plays a massive part in that phenomenon that we call the dynamic equilibrium. If we can't figure, figure out where molecules are going to go, such as glucose or sodium or potassium or just fats or blood for that matter, we're going to have a whole bunch of trouble. So if we can predict how things move, life gets a lot better really fast. So this unfortunately is going to be a lot of chemistry talk from last year, so I apologize. But hopefully you remember that everything's always in motion. Depending on the type, the phase of matter will help dictate the type of motion that you happen to have. But Whatever it is, things move in a random order. We're not entirely sure where things are going to go, but we can make predictions in terms of overall motion. And that's what we call diffusion. Diffusion is a random motion from a high gradient to a low gradient. And there can be a whole bunch of things as to what triggers that word gradient. So the word gradient that hopefully you can see me spinning the mouse over, the word gradient just means a difference. So if we talk about concentration, so how much stuff you pack into an area, things will randomly diffuse from a high concentration to a low concentration, where everything will be eventually spread out and you can't tell that there's any motion anymore. Things will also move from high pressure to low pressure or high temperature to low temperature or along charge lines. There's all sorts of things that trigger diffusion. But things naturally will do this. They will go from a high to a low. So the most famous of these, of course, is concentration. It's one of the things that you focus on a lot in chemistry. And the term concentration, I don't know if you really understood it from there because I, if you had me in class, you probably didn't understand. If you had another teacher, I don't know. Maybe they did a better job than me. I don't know. But you have these things called solutes. So that's the stuff that you're dissolving into the solution. And then you have the other junk in there, which is called the solvent. When we make reference to concentration, the only thing we're really caring about, at least in physio, is the solute. So what am I dissolving? So if I have a solution of sodium ions and a solution of potassium ions, what would dictate the motion of the sodium ions is other sodium ions. If I were to mix the sodium and potassium ions together, the potassium ions don't do anything to the sodium ions, much like how the sodium ions don't do anything to the potassium ions. It's only that one thing that actually counts in terms of concentration. Sodium only cares about sodium. Potassium only cares about potassium. Glucose only cares about glucose. Uh, albumin only cares about albumin. Um, immunoglobulins only care about immunoglobulins. Every single substance that you can dissolve inside of water or whatever else, that's the thing that dictates the concentration gradient. But there's other things I mean, we've been hearing about that where there are hurricanes and stuff like that. Well, that's due to temperatures and pressures. Differences in temperatures and differences in pressures make wind happen or make it so that it feels hot or it feels cold. And there could be other things that end up affecting diffusion like how big something is or whether it can be soluble and stuff like that. We can mathematically measure diffusion and it's measured by this thing called Fick's law. So you have the rate. A rate is always some distance per time or some concentration per time. It's, it's something divided by something else. That's what we mean by a rate. And there's some type of constant in there and you have an area where you're actually doing the diffusing. So over the course of a dime or the surface of a cup or whatever. If there's a pressure difference, we can make reference to the pressure difference, and then we can see, well, how far are these things being separated? This is something that gets used a little bit in physiology. Maybe and maybe not, depending on which chemistry class you had, you might have actually seen Graham's Law. We could actually measure the speed of things diffusing, diffusing based upon how big they are. But we can predict how things move based upon knowing a little bit about the substances that we're dealing with. Why is this important? Because we need to know this in order for us to talk about what comes next, 
which is now let's make things move inside of a cell. And it's that cellular membrane that's going to help dictate a lot of what happens. So we need to get a grasp on diffusion so that we can now apply diffusion inside of a cell where everything's going to become a little bit different.